All right. I want to talk, uh, rewind a, a bit and talk about lab four and five because it seems like there was some misunderstanding on that. So first thing I want to do is I want to go over that. Um, we just discovered there's a missing quote in my one example after the media query. And uh, so if you download that example, be sure to put the quote in. Um, let's review the assignment of lab four and lab five. Lab four. Pick a topic. All right. The idea of this was for you to pick a topic other than the topics that we've already been talking about. All right. In other words, not mobile design. All right. So this was meant to be like you could pick something you're interested in. Um, really, any any topic that you want, and create a desktop and a mobile version for a page about the topic. Redirect the user to to the proper page based on user agent and use responsive techniques and take steps to ensure consistency. Let's analyze this assignment. All right. Can this be done in HTML? Using just normal media queries, correct? Well, no. Can this be done in HTML? No. Why can this not be done in HTML? Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> why is PHP required? What part of this requires PHP? In uh, the string. Mm -hmm. user, right. The part that requires PHP is this piece right here. Redirect the user to the proper page based on the user agent. You can't do that in just plain old HTML. Well, the, all the examples we gave did had a snippet of PHP code that was a traffic cop in and looked at the, the user agent string and decided whether to send them to the mobile page or to the desktop page. So right off the bat, the, the implication is, is this needs to be done in PHP. All right? Use responsive techniques. We talked about this last time, right? That if something goes wrong in that redirection, if someone gets redirected or gets directed to the full page and they're actually on a mobile device, we still want the page to look good. So we're still going to use responsive techniques even in our full version of the page. All right? We're still going to use responsive techniques on the full version of the page just in case they get to the full version by mistake. So we're still going to apply those responsive techniques so the page looks good. And we went over an example of that. We said that was sort of the, the fallback uh, method, that if they got sent to the full page and the media query failed, and again, I put in a ridiculous number for the minimum width, something like 1,000, you more than likely will not put in that high of a number. But um, if they get directed to the full page and, they're not on a, and they are on a mobile device, it should display Fine. In other words, using responsive techniques. What does that mean? That means having a style sheet. That's sort of the base to get sort of the general basic appearance. And then have a style sheet with a media query to, um, to um, progressively enhance the page should they be um, really actually on, on a desktop monitor. Here's another little hint that you might want to use PHP. Take steps to ensure consistency. All right? That one, admittedly, you have to read between the lines a little bit. Because if we think about taking steps to ensure consistency, one part of that relates to um, using a CSS file. Right? Having, uh, you know, having CSS code in a common place so that, you know, regardless of, of uh, which, uh, which page they get to that you're pointing at probably like the same base CSS file. All right? So that was part of it. The other part of it about ensuring consistency is about consistency in content. Because the idea is, is that we're going to want to have at least some content shared across the board. Now, we might not want to have all the content, all the content shared. In other words, in my example, in the mobile version, I don't have the video and I have less text. 
than in the desktop version. But I do have some of the content shared. In other words, the grid of pictures is shared between the two platforms and so on. Now, how do you accomplish sharing content? Well, the way that we've talked about in this class is through PHP include files. So, taking steps to ensure consistency, part of that would involve using um, PHP include files to put some content in common that you can share between the full and the mobile page. All right. Now, to be sure, you're going to have some different content too, right? Um, the assumption of this assignment was that you have two different pages, all right? And if you remember, when we talked about developing two different pages, the idea was you have two different page, pages for a reason, all right? That um, due to the nature of the, of, of the topic or due to the content, you might want to have more stuff on the desktop page than you have on the mobile page, keeping in mind what the user, user's goals would be when visiting this page. So, you're not going to necessarily have identical content, and it's not going to look identical, but, again, through the use of include files, responsive techniques, and the redirection, you'll give them at least some sort of consistent appearance. So, um, if you misunderstood this assignment, no problem. Just, you can rework it. You know, that's, that's one of the reasons uh, I have the policy of, of, of reworking it. Um, you know, when I see something that looks sort of indicative that, that there's a miscommunication between the requirements and that, then, okay, fine. Let's not argue about that. Let's just make sure we understand it and go forward. So, uh, those of you that did have an issue with this, um, you know, you can rework it and, and develop um, pages that, um, that, that do fit this criteria. The key parts of this assignment are, number one, getting the redirection down. All right, so you're going to need a page to do, the, you're going to need uh, something to do the switching between the two pages. And we saw a couple examples of that. All right. Second key point is there will be two pages. So there will be a full and there will be a mobile page. The last part, is, or the next part, is using responsive techniques. Again, why do we do that? We do that just in case something goes wrong with the redirection or whatever. It's sort of a, a fail-safe, bit of a fail-safe mechanism that we put in there. And lastly, we want to do what we can to ensure consistency. So those are really the four key elements of this. And, and as we said, uh, ensuring consistency consists of CSS and consists of... Uh, using include files in PHP. Any questions on this? Now that we talked a little more about that. In lab five, if I recall correctly, involves add a second set of pages to your homework. All right, make sure it fits this criteria and then add a desktop home page and a mobile page that uses access keys. And then lab six was take either labs one through three or labs four through five and give them a mobile app look by using jQuery mobile. One through three sort of work together, four and five sort of work together, so take either set of those labs and give one of them a mobile look using jQuery mobile. Your, your latest lab is to redo an assignment that we've done in CISS 216, uh, one of the assignments that we have later on in the, in the semester, and give it sort of a mobile looking look. So you'll be doing the same form, um, you'll just be using uh, jQuery mobile to, to give it a, a more mobile look. Questions? Yes. Um, are we to use um, the, an assignment that we did in that class? Um, well, if you still happen to have it around, you could you could potentially use it as a starting point, or you could use it to refer to it. What class was it? Uh, the web development class, CISS 216. See there? I keep them. Pays to keep them. 
It does. It's a good reference. It's like yeah. Uh, if you have it or don't have it, it's not, it should not be that big of a deal to recreate it. Um, you know, you will not want to just use a carte blanche, you know, you don't just want to bring it over because you want to put the hooks in to give it a mobile look. So, even if you do have the code, that puts you, that maybe gives you, that maybe saves you some typing, all right, to, to set up the, the stuff, but to get it styled and looking that way, um, you know, you have to put that effort in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right. Another uh, thing in the area of announcements. Uh, I will not be here Wednesday. Wednesday we'll have an activity. And the activity is for you to do some research on your own. And I'll post the details of it. But to do some research uh, uh, on your own about... Uh, jQuery mobile and HTML5 forms. Let's find some new fun things that we can do in jQuery mobile or HTML5 forms that we have not talked about in class. And bring those examples in class so that we can talk about them on the following Monday. So there will be, in fact I might as well enable it now, there will be in the lectures folder an activity for 1010. And that activity is for you to research research features of HTML5 forms and jQuery mobile not covered so far in class. Post the forum at least two examples of each to share with your classmates. Include example code. Um, if the page that you link to has example code, that's fine. If not, you can write a little snippet of example code. That would be great, too. And then we'll discuss this in class a week from today. So we'll discuss this in class 10-15. There's a, there's a website. I don't know which one it was, but I found it. Uh -huh. I reference it to it. It has all the, the jQuery, uh -huh. all the, what would you say, uh, data content. Right, right. The, the, right. The, the, the data roles. Well, no, yeah, data, data roles, roles is one of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we just, and again, the, the book even says, you know, we just scratched the surface of jQuery. Um, what type of, I guess, in, in terms of feature, in terms of like button colors or background issues? Anything that we have not talked about in class. So maybe one thing would be to theme your page. You know, we've gone with just the default themes. For, the, for, for this, you know, we've, we've, we've gone in and we haven't really styled jQuery, uh, but I, if you go to the jQuery mobile site, um, there, there's a, a little section about theming jQuery mobile so that you can, you can set fonts and set, co set colors and, and so on, all right? So really, anything that we have not talked about in class is fair game, all right? So, um, you know what we talked about class so far? Things such as the the the, the nav bar, uh, data role. Let's see, what's the other one? The 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 list view or whatever that's called to get the to get the buttons with the little arrow for the links. You know, we've done that already. The header, the footer, anchoring the footer, anchoring the header. We've done those sorts of things. So, and then we're going to do some more stuff today with forms. So, anything that we haven't talked about in jQuery is is fair game. Okay. Can you refresh my mind that HTML5 forms? Um, yeah. I'm getting some of these wires crossed here. Okay. Forms, right? You know what forms are in HTML? Yeah, you fill out the information right. and submit. Okay. You know what HTML5 is, right? It's the newest version of HTML5. HTML5 offers um, some new features and forms that will that we'll, we'll scratch the surface on today by doing a little slider bar, but there's other things in HTML5 forms that we haven't talked about, so find one of them or two of them. Did you have a question? Yeah, can you um, repeat what we went over for jQuery so far on that list you just said? Um, I'll try. Uh, we talked about the header, the footer, 
anchoring the header, anchoring the footer. We talked about the data role of, and again, I forget the wording for it, list view or, or something like that. Um, and we talked about a nav bar to get the little thing on the bottom. And uh, plus what, what we're going to talk about, what we're going to talk about today. Okay, and that's forms we're talking about today? Yes, we're going to talk about forms and a few other things. Okay. Now I posted this example and uh, let me download it. And all I really did is I went through the example in chapter 6 and I just followed their instructions. So I have a finished version. That is a great way to learn this stuff. Um, you can get off their website, sort of the starting, um, what do I want to say, the starting values for this, and uh, then you can go through the exercise of finishing up uh, these activities. All right, so I'm just going to open this guy up in a regular browser. I guess I could open it up in a I'm putting this in CI NetPub WW root because again there there is a little bit of PHP in this and we'll take a look at how they use PHP in this example. So let's go and let's fire up. I'll bet this is gonna give me an error. Let's go on to CIS SQL then, and we'll fire it up there, and we'll look at the source code on this machine. Chapter 6. All right. We have this page, which is our home page. We have find an event, which is left empty for now. We have our popular tartans page, which is a lovely page. It has a list of tartans that if you click on it, it will take you to a page to show you what that tartan looks like. To answer the question that someone posed uh, a couple classes ago, is jQuery mobile strictly for mobile? I would say it depends on the, on the application. I think in this case, it, it kind of looks good. Uh, at least some of these, some of this functionality looks pretty decent uh, for this. Does all the browsers, does it accept jQuery? Um, well, First of all, you'd have to have JavaScript enabled. So that would assume that JavaScript's enabled. All right. Beyond that, I mean, this is IE8. And if IE8 supports the code in there, then I would think other browsers would too. You know, it's not a matter of supporting jQuery. It's supporting JavaScript sufficiently to do the functionality of jQuery and, and uh, doing HTML5 enough to do the functionality of jQuery. So that's more of what you're getting into more than does the, does the browser support jQuery, you know. I, I guess that's sort of a shorthand way to say it doesn't support it. Um, but again, this is working uh, with those couple of catches in there. This is working on IE8, so I would be pretty optimistic that, you know, maybe not ancient browsers, but, but relatively newer browsers. Would it be a good idea to put uh, PHP in there to say, hey, this JavaScript's not enabled, go to this page, which doesn't need JavaScript? Um, it's a, that's a good question. Does PHP know if JavaScript is enabled or not? I am not sure. There is a no script tag in HTML that you can put in to create a link to a non-JavaScript page. So if you use a no script tag in HTML, that can, you know, that can catch that. The question is, is what happens if JavaScript fails? 
In this case, if JavaScript fails, we get a page that just looks like Go and get the menu bar in and tools options. JavaScript, turn that guy off. Well, JavaScript, it looks like that. So if that's acceptable to you, <laughs> then that's fine. Otherwise, you might come up with plan B. All right, let's go and turn JavaScript back on, and let's take a look at some of this functionality in here. All right. Notice, notice that the, the page that we're on stays highlighted. And, you know, as we move around, navigate, that different one changes. Um, notice that, and this is really slick, again, the, 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 the pleasures of using a framework. If I start typing in B-A-R, it starts filtering based on that. And, again, it's not any code I put in. It's code that's just based in, in the framework. So that's real, real nifty. We do have the ability to, right now, this is just a prototype for the form, but if you click Create, it loads up a form where you can go in and you can select a color and how many stitches you want. And again, this is an HTML5 control uh, with forms. All right, so we're going to spend most of our time uh, looking at this page, the tartan page, and then the form page. All right. The other stuff, um, either we talked about it previously or is straightforward enough that uh, we've already gone over examples. Let's look at the tartan page. Here we go. Same kind of stuff we've been seeing before. This is important. When I was working through um, well, this example and in my own example, I forgot that line and the type looked minuscule on the page. So it's important to put that in there. The next three lines, lines 8 through 10, are my jQuery stuff, which is just copied verbatim from the other examples. So then let... I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you're saying that the viewport line 
is the case of having your text look readable or big enough on mobile handhelds? Is that what you're saying? That, that gives sort of the initial state of it to make it readable. In other words, if I were to pull this off, let's see if we can see it on this browser. That's not viewing that page. The, re the reason I ask is that sometimes on the, on the base or the mobile CSS, sometimes I'm putting in the actual font size or font color. Well, in this case, the font size so that it's big enough as opposed to having that micro type pop up. Yeah, it's not really apparent here. But uh, to, to answer your question, yeah, that goes a long way in, in doing that. And this also allows for zooming. Let's go and undo that. So if you're, if you're, uh, if you're having an issue of the uh, mobile stuff not looking readable and being very small type, you, you probably forgot that line. When you resize, if you're going to resize the font, remember you, you're going to want to use M's, by the way. You're not going to want to use a, a particular pixel or point size or, or some sort of absolute size. You're going to want to use M's, which stands for the amount of emphasis it has. Okay. Notice that we have a style sheet in line 11, and notice it's after the jQuery stuff. That way, if there happens to be a style rule, we can apply in there to sort of override the style rules that come from jQuery. All right. Let's look at the stuff that's interesting here. The header, the position of the header is fixed. All right. Um, we have a back button to take us from the um, tartan page back to the home page. And there's a little icon associated with it. So if we look at this, go to the popular tartans page, there's a little back icon. That comes from me putting in a data icon of back. Likewise, the create has a little plus, and it has a data icon of plus. So we can add nifty little um, icons to our links to make it more mobile-ish. Right. And these data icons. Yep. Uh, okay, I understand it equals plus or equals back, but where is the plus and back reference that defines what it will look like or its size? Well, that, that's part of the jQuery framework. Oh, so it's Yeah, so that's, that's nothing I define. That's oh, part of the framework. That's already. What are some of the other values other than back and plus? G. I don't know, but that would be a great thing to post for your Wednesday activity, right? Because, you know, we went over a couple of them. What are some of the other icons you have available? That would be something that you could, you could post. Watch, we'll get, we'll get like nine posts of that then. Mm -hmm. There's only three people in the class. Data theme. I don't know, how, do, how does data theming work in jQuery? That would be a good thing to talk about. Okay, so that's about it on the header. The main thing I want to talk about is the icons here and here. The list view, all right, again, data role of list view. You know, what are all the other data roles that you could have? Well, again, that would be another good topic to, to look into. Now, notice I added the data filter equals true. That is what's responsible for giving me the filter. So as I type in the filter, as I type in the little search button, it, uh, with each type, it, it filters out that, um, 
that uh, 